this should be very familiar, very comfortable for you. If you're if you're a .NET developer, you you know you're already a .NET Maui developer. Hey everyone, Luke Cook and Matt Goldman here for SSW TV, and today we are going to give you a quick talk about .NET Maui. We're about to release a whole stream of videos about them, um, but Matt, I just wanted to run through a couple of different things with you um, briefly. So. .NET MAUI has just hit general release. It's another option that's now available to developers if they want to write native apps for you know, a bunch of different platforms that are out there. Uh, I guess the first question is using .NET MAUI versus some of the other alternatives out there, uh, when would you consider .NET MAUI to be the better option for, uh, for developing? Well, it's a good question. Um, the, the first thing that I would say is that, that one of the options that I would immediately draw a line through is, is using uh, kind of uh, platform only tooling. So I wouldn't, you know, write. Don't do native, native apps then. Well, well .NET no. MAUI apps are native apps. Yeah, sorry. But, but I, wouldn't, I wouldn't write a Swift app, for example. Even if I only wanted it for iOS, I would still use .NET MAUI because, you know, when your customers are banging on your door a year down the line and saying, you know, now we want it on Android as well, you can just tick a box. Right. So, so I would rule out the, the single platform options straight away. And then your other options for cross-platform uh, app building, it, there's, there's two approaches. One is to do a web wrapper where you build a web app, well, a, a, you know, a single page application, yep. and you use something like Electron to, to wrap it in a, a standalone uh, app. So if you're already a React house or an Angular house or something like that, then you might choose to go with one of those options as opposed to sort of learning .NET um, to, to do your mobile app, right? You might, yep. Um, or there's the other approach, which is that uh, even though you're not writing it in those, those kind of platform uh, languages, they've still compiled down to a, a native platform binary executable. Mm -hmm. So that's what .NET MAUI does, that's what React Native does, and that's what Flutter does. Um, so you know, once you've chosen between those two approaches, um, you know the, the choice becomes you know which well which one of those you use. I would say for us at SSW, .NET Maui is a no-brainer because we're all .NET developers. Yep. Um, so it's it's a it's a very simple thing to learn. It's not it's not a different thing that you need to learn. It's part of .NET the same way that Entity Framework is, and the same way that ASP.NET Core is, right? So if you already know how to do .NET, you know you already know how to do Maui. So if I'm using .NET six, then I can immediately spin up a .NET MAUI app, I can bring in Entity Framework, I can bring in to. all of my other NuGet packages and just start using them for mobile development as well. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I will get all of the you know, um, component, shared component libraries available to me if I wanted to be able to you know, write my UI components and then reuse them across a, a web app or something like that, I would be able to do that with .NET MAUI too, right? Yeah, you, you can actually, because you, you can also, one of the options for building UIs in .NET MAUI is to use Blazor for your UI. So uh, you could have, if you've, if you've already got a full stack solution that's on .NET, share all the code between all the layers. And if you've got a web app that's in Blazor, you can actually build your Maui desktop or mobile app using Blazor for the UI as well. You can have a Razor class library to share UI components between those different UIs. Yeah, right, okay. And I mean, what you're, what you're showing me here is uh, the, the main entry point of, of a Maui app, right? And this looks very, very similar to any other sort of .NET uh, app that we write in the modern day, where it's using the generic host builder pattern. And That's right. So we get all of our dependency injection patterns and everything available to us right out of the box. Yeah, that's right. I, I could come along here and I could just start um, registering services. Um, you know, the same way that I would in an ASP.NET Core app or anything else. Yep. Um, you know, it just, you know, like you said, it's a generic host builder. This should be very familiar, very comfortable for you. If you're, if you're a .NET developer, you're, you know, you're already a .NET MAUI developer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, presumably all of these things would, would be bu being built anyway if you're doing an enterprise-wide application because you're already going to have your infrastructure and your application code around using proper uh, dependency injection patterns to begin with. You should. Yeah, you should, yeah. All right, fantastic. Um, thank you very much for explaining to me why I would use it. Um, and it looks like you know the obvious no-brainer choice for any .NET developer if they wanted to get their hands dirty on mobile apps. I think so. Right, right. Uh, this has been Luke Cook and Matt Goldman for SSW TV. We'll see you next time.